In the midst of a continuing recession, Cardiff is home to over 10,000 unemployed people. Last year, youth unemployment in the Welsh capital peaked at 3,485 of those aged between 18 and 24. Cardiff Fashion Quarters opened its doors in late September and houses independently run stores selling vintage and handmade items. This documentary follows the story of three young people having a go of it. Before and after interviews show how they weathered the storm of their first Christmas period. Job title? My job title? Oh, my, my, my. Um, wannabe Dell Boy. And um, I'm 25 years old. And my name's Alec Moxham. Uh, Emily Klein, I'm from London. Or Middlesex, just outside London. Then, um, I'm Anthony Burnett. Um, I have a shop stall here in the CFQ quarter. Uh, I came about it quite by accident really. Um, professionally I'm a carpenter and um, I was doing some work in here and um, the offer came up of a store which I, which I took um, because I've, I've come from a family of hoarders so we've got a lot of stuff, got a lot of stuff to get through and, um, and I like buying and selling things as well, I find it interesting and um, yeah it keeps me interested yeah. Think. You know, I don't really want to be a plasterer anymore. It's cold, it's wet, and if you want to be a plasterer, forget about it. <laughs> it's a horrible job. <laughs> so ideally, this is what I'd like to do for the rest of my life, is just, you know, have a little vintage boutique and antique shop and be my own boss. I've always just liked vintage clothes or second-hand clothes or recycling things, like for the house or clothes. Recycling's a big part of it as well. Um, yeah, I've always enjoyed that and I've always sort of displayed it in a way in my life, like in my bedrooms and the houses that I've lived in and this gives me the opportunity to do that and then to sell it on to people as well, so, yeah. Ricky came up with the idea for Cardiff Fashion Quarters and now rents out stores on behalf of the owner. Uh, basically, I was a, a clothes buyer for uh, a fashion store in Cardiff for 27 years uh, and then travelling around sort of Europe uh, and... and all of uh, Manchester, Liverpool, I'd seen these units all around and thought there was a gap in the market really for Cardiff to, to have one. The building is situated on Womanby Street and has a rich history. Uh, it was owned by the BBC, it was a cinema before, and it was owned by the BBC and they did the first recording in February the 13th, it's actually 100 years I think, next February. Uh, then it went to a Rolls Royce garage and then it became Black's camping store and then what it is now be better than what I imagined. I imagine more contained shops but it's such a more open and sharing space than, than what I probably first imagined so it's brilliant and it's really colourful. Something that was very important to all of them was running their stores to their own ideologies, their mantras. Everything that I buy is from a charity shops. I do maybe 20, 30, 40 charity shops a week and this is why I managed to find all the good stuff. Um, I'm not a mean person by any means, but if I can save money, I will. And one of my mantras that I like to live by is one that I have in my shop, and it's called my philosophy. We all buy things at the end of the day, end up in the bin. Stop now. Why not buy an antique or vintage item? And if your taste change, you still have the value in your antique or vintage item, which can be traded in or sold later on. Don't just recycle your waste, recycle your cash too. It's got to be eclectic and... It's, and uh... Um, Eye-catching, mostly as well. You know, we don't want it to be too much like a car boot sale. We're very m mindful of that, I suppose. So, yeah, good quality vintage stuff, and just um, something to capture the imagination a bit. Tony gave me a preview of some of the things he hoped would make this venture a success. One of the objects I like really, really much is this one here. It's um, it's a little artist palette. It's um, it's Danish. It's about 105 years old, um, 110 years old. But it's a very unusual thing to have. I've never come across another one in the 15 years I've been collecting. Um, and I'm probably not going to come across another one again. <laughs> on this store, I have two stores. I have one in the corner as well. But on this store, mostly we have um, custom printed t-shirts, which are printed out by my business associates. Uh, various different designs. Various different styles of printing as well. This is an ordinary tankard, you may think. But... It was actually an exhibit from the Gallery de Pantene in it northern Italy. So it was an, ex an exhibition piece. It was specifically made for that gallery. It um, wasn't really for public sale. 
How we got, got to Cardiff in Little Old Wales, I don't know. Um, but I managed to find it in a charity shop, and I love it. It's um, absolutely beautiful. It's Tinglaze Delfway, and it dates from around about 1950. A bit of Jimi Hendrix, you know, these go down quite well. But then also, on top of the new T-shirts, we've got vintage as well, bags, things like that, um, books, anything really, anything. Sort of weird little kitsch home things, jewellery. I really like old books as well. Anything old, absolutely anything that I find quite interesting that sometimes I don't even know what it is. Tony and Emily, I caught up with Alec to see how things had progressed. Well, um, we haven't seen as much of a pickup in in uh, customers we'd like. I think mostly because we haven't we've had a bit of a problem with um, promotion. Really, people haven't haven't understood the need for it to be to be a, a, a major key factor. So um, they're not so willing to like. They don't want to pay up for people to go flyer in and things like that, so we haven't seen the increase in customers that we'd like. So it's been a bit disappointing, really, to be honest, Jake. At the moment, obviously, we're quite a new company, so business has been a little bit somewhat slow. Um, it is making a little bit of money, and I'm paying my managing pay to pay my rent, which is the main thing, you know. We're in a collective here, and there's so many different personalities, and a lot of them quite big as well, that um, sometimes it's hard getting stuff done. And yeah, it can get quite frustrating, really. You feel like you're, you're fighting an uphill battle sometimes. So, yeah, it did get a bit much for me last week, and uh, I had to take time out. I got a week, I got a week off out of it, so it was all right. <laughs> it, was worth, it was worth having a little hissy fit, yeah, definitely. Despite a disappointing forecast, Cardiff's shopping centres had several weeks of record sales in the lead-up to Christmas. The St David's Centre reporting to have made £2 million a day in turnover. However, retail experts warned that smaller independent stores would be suffering due to online competition. Have our lot braved the storm? Let's find out. I had a, other work commitments really, and it, this place was eating up too much of my time, so I decided to focus on my uh, other avenues of profit. Alec has left Cardiff Fashion Quarters. Tony has also left, but declined to be interviewed further. Of the three merchants I interviewed, the only one remaining is Emily. Yeah, I think them guys were passionate, but they... I do have another job as well, like a full-time job, but I think... I don't know, really. I guess that over the winter, with it being quiet, you know, you've got to use that time to, you know, sort your space out, maybe restock and stuff, but you can't lose... You know, with a new business like this, you can't lose passion or you can't lose interest or you can't lose sort of a, a vision for the future. Like, I think you, two people you spoke to have gone, but everybody else, literally as soon as the space becomes available, then it's filled within that day. So, you know, there are still a lot of people out there very keen and passionate about, you know, about the, the success of this place. Yeah, I miss, the, I miss the, the fun, the atmosphere and that. It's a lovely place to be. It's, I say it's full of nice people and uh, there's always interesting things coming in and coming through here. So it's, it was lots of interesting stuff to do and talk about. But um, like I say, I think I needed to play to my strengths a bit more. Do you regret leaving anyway? Uh, no, no. So as Alec and Tony go their separate ways, Emily looks to the future. Um, we want to like late night, late night shopping and have it an event with music and maybe drink or food. Um, we want to do craft nights as well. So we set up platforms and we have, you know, be making things. Maybe it's dress making or jewelry making. Um, we want to work with the music venues down the, the Wamabi Street so we can do like outside street festivals and stuff. But the cafe is going to be open soon, that's going to be amazing and bring a lot of people in. So these are all things that, you know, keeping us excited and sort of powering through. So it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs>